So 2018, an amazing year of learning and growth here on the property and at the bee yard. In this video, I want to share with you seven things that I learned this year that I didn't know last year. And also, I want to tell you about my plans for 2019, so stick around. But first things first, I have to say thank you to you. We started this year with 15,800 subscribers on the channel. And I thought we were going to hit 30,000 subscribers this year. And I was right. We did. In June. We're finishing out the year with 42,000 subscribers. The traffic has been amazing. The growth has been just unbelievable. And that's because of you guys. So thank you for your comments, your participation, your advice, your support. Just, you guys have been just fantastic. It's been truly humbling and greatly appreciated. So thank you. So looking back a year ago, in the middle of last winter, I knew there's a lot of things coming up that I was going to have to do this year that I had never done before. Things that were making me nervous. And I figured out how to do them, and now they all just kind of seem like second nature. So here's seven things I learned this year that I didn't know last year. So the number one thing I learned this year was splits. I tried three different ways of splitting the hive. The first way was splitting into a nuke and let the bees self make a queen, which was successful. I also split into a nuke and installed a queen. That was also successful. And I also split a hive in half and let the bees sort of make their own queen from a queen cell. And that also worked. Had a little laying worker blip in there, but overall everything was successful that I tried. I do think my favorite way of splitting was splitting into the nukes and letting the bees make their own queens. It was very easy to manage and I had a high success rate. Just every one I tried worked. Which brings me to the number two thing, which was making queens. I had never bred a queen or let the bees make their own queen before and I was really nervous about it. And I tried it and it worked. Seven of my splits this year were successful self-made queens. So I tried it, it worked every time. I'm definitely gonna be doing it next year the same exact way. So the third thing I tackled this year was learning about swarming and preventing swarming. It was something that I'd been nervous about for years and I'd never even gotten close to needing to worry about it. But this year I definitely did. We had a lot of growth in the springtime and especially Balboa was tending to show signs of swarming. And every time there was the sign of swarming, I dealt with it. There's a video here that I'll link you to where I successfully stopped a swarm from happening and uh, it wound up turning into three hives. I did have one swarm this year in September, but that hive also successfully made a queen from the swarm cell and everything wound up being just fine. But uh, I hadn't been in that hive for a while and I just missed the signs. But now I know what to look for and I, I'm not so scared of it anymore. The number four thing is I overcame my fear of feeding my bees. I've always fed my bees when I think they needed to be fed. And I do get a lot of comments and some hate in the comments about feeding and people to asking me, why do you feed and telling me I don't need to feed. I feed my bees when they look like they need to be fed. And I've learned that that is just fine. Don't let anyone tell you not to feed. If your bees need the food, they will take the food. If they don't need the food, they're not gonna take it. So feed your bees if you think they need it. Number five, marking queens. I had never marked a queen before. I've watched the videos, I've seen the pros pick the queens right up and mark the queens. That seemed a little scary to me. I got a product linked below and I got my marking pens also linked below and it was easy. It's no big deal. I marked my queens and everything was fine. It's super easy, nothing to be afraid of. I will link the video about the marking queens right up here. So number six, extracting honey. We had extracted our honey in the past by just squeezing it through bags. This year I knew we were gonna need to get an extractor. It was pretty intimidating, but I did a lot of reading, a lot of research, and I walked into the Maxent factory and they were extremely helpful. Uh, Maxent is in our state, it's right down the road from us. I walked in, Jake was very helpful, walked me through all the options. I'm psyched that I got what I got and thank you for the help. And uh, yeah, it wasn't scary at all. So now we have an extractor and we're hoping next year to need it uh, and use it. And finally, thing number seven is overwintering. The first year of beekeeping, I read a lot, I watched a lot of videos and I deduced my own sort of system out of tar paper, Vivaldi boards, foam shells, all kinds of things. 
and I got a hive to survive the winter. Balboa survived the winter. Last year, I did the exact same thing, and two of three hives survived and came out strong. So I knew my system worked. This year, I streamlined it even further, removing the tar paper and adding the core plast wraps, um, making my foam shells foldable and storable, and I think we're gonna be good this year. I am very confident that the system works, and I'm really psyched that it's really easy to apply, I know it's gonna be easy to store. The other scary thing about winter was just worrying about the cold. Last year, we had the coldest winter I've ever experienced, and two hives survived the winter. So this year, we're actually having a relatively mild winter um, so far. It could change very quickly at any time, but uh, even if it's as bad as last year, I'm feeling pretty good because I know what I did last year worked, and this year, things are even better. So overwintering, no longer terrifying. We'll see what happens, but at least I feel like I know what I'm doing now. So 2018 was all about expansion. I learned how to make bees. I learned how to make queens. I learned how to build colonies, but it wasn't without problems. Mainly, we have a dearth problem here on the property. Despite having an entire field of buckwheat and all kinds of flowers planted, the bees were in a dearth and they were not bringing in nectar for two whole months in the middle of the summer. So there's no point in having 10 colonies or 12 colonies or 20 colonies if your property can't support the bees. So my main focus in 2019 is going to be dealing with that. And I'm gonna do that two ways. We have this giant four acre blank canvas right here. The goal this year is to plant this field with as many nectar producing flowers as I can to help support these bees up here. Now I know flowering trees would be the best thing, but I can't plant tr just plant trees this year and have that help the bees next summer. So I'm going to be focusing on flowers, field crops, things like that that I can plant right now that will support the bees. I am gonna be planting in the long term and thinking about trees that will be good for bees, but right now I gotta plant this field. So that is the top priority for 2019 is figuring out what will grow in this field that will help the bees and get that in the ground as early as possible. The second thing is I need to find a balance between a number of hives and what this property can support. Now I know that not all 12 colonies that I have are going to survive. We're gonna come out of the winter with maybe six, maybe eight, who knows how many hives. Some are going to die. The ones that make it, I want to try immediately to build up as fast as possible to catch that spring flow, and then not focus on expanding the bee yard, but focus on building those hives to be as strong as possible to take advantage of the flowers that we do have. So that is the second goal of 2019, is to just go for quality over quantity. Go for strength over just expanding to 20 hives. Make the hives that survive here thrive here. So I'm gonna start right early in the springtime with the survivor hives, just building them up and building them up as much as I can, giving them all the resources they can to grow so that when that spring flow hits, they can take advantage of it. Then continue to build them over the summer so that they, they take advantage to our huge fall flow, which I know will come. And that leads me into the third goal of this year, which is to try and use my resource hives as actual resource hives. This year I used my resource hives, the sort of double nuke boxes that I had as my splits. And I grew my bees into those splits and then I graduated them into larger hives. So I used them more as like incubators to just grow the hives into full-size hives. But next year I wanna use them as actual resource hives. And the way to do that is to split the hives into those resource hives, grow them into the hives, and then just let them continually produce brood for the big hives, the production hives. Use those smaller hives to pump up the strong hives and let them just live as small nukes indefinitely. So how it's going to look next year is I'm gonna see what survives the winter Whatever survives the winter will be my production hives for the year. It might be six hives, it might be seven hives, who knows. But I'm gonna leave those hives as full size, do some splits off of them early on, and then use those splits as resources for the big hives to bump them up, to build 
monster hives. So I'm going to have fewer full-size hives, but have a lot of nukes. So I've had this goal of overwintering a nuke, and I've never done it before. Uh, I've tried it once, it wasn't successful, but I wanna try and have a lot of nukes that I can put together and sort of create sort of a nuke cluster that will go over the winter. So I could start out in 2020 springtime with a whole bunch of really powerful little nukes that I can then turn into full-size hives because by then my full-size hives are gonna be probably needing to be refreshed. So those are the big goals of 2019. We're gonna get this field planted and pumping nectar. We're gonna take what survives the winter and build strong hives and not necessarily go for splitting a million hives. And we're also gonna get the resource hives going as resource hives to help support the big hives. And we're gonna try and overwinter a bunch of nukes next year. So once again, I just have to say thank you. I am truly humbled at the attention you've given to this channel and the support you've given to me over the last three years. I would not be where I am now if it was not for YouTube. Uh, I read all of the comments you guys make um, and I learn so much. I, I'm, I'm here because of you and I'm gonna keep doing this because of you guys. So thank you. So January 1st marks three years of this channel. I, I started it as a resolution. January 2016 and I didn't know what to expect I didn't know where it was gonna go but here we are and I am not stopping and you will see more videos from me coming up I got stuff from 2018 that I haven't edited yet that's still gonna pop up here in the next few weeks and if I'm not posting here I'm posting on Instagram so check me out over there Vino Farm Instagram and uh, yeah that's about it so you guys are awesome and I wish you the best in 2019, and I will see you around. Thanks again.